So here I'm going to show you a little bit of the graphical user interface that's part of the system flow recording software package that comes with every Talon recording system uh, that we provide. Uh, the graphical user interface is simple and intuitive. Uh, I'll just quickly navigate through the screens and give you an idea of some of the features and facilities that we have here. Uh, on the main screen, uh, whatever boards are installed in the system, which is based on the model number, the configuration of those boards will show up here. Uh, by clicking a button, we're able to bring up the board parameters. In this case, this, uh, this is a 2729 uh, portable recorder. It has a model 78741 board, uh, which is a 3.6 A to D, uh, gigahertz A to D converter uh, that has the ability to operate in either a single or dual channel mode. So as you can see here, we have the ability to do things like set up the, the channel mode, uh, the clock frequency, which is the sample clock. Uh, this particular card offers digital down conversion and by simply clicking on the digital down conversion button we're able to select uh, the bandwidth or decimation uh, that we'd like to have as well as the center frequency of a, of a signal um, that we're looking for. So the IF frequency, let's say of an RF down converter would be provided here and the associated bandwidth. Uh, additionally things like the packing mode, the gate and triggering, things like that are also made available in the board parameters. So. Um, just a very simple, easy way to set up a system. You don't need to know anything about how to program it. You just simply fill out the fields. Um, also, we report back the temperature and the voltage levels. This is just a sanity check to make sure that everything's working. Uh, we provide a block diagram uh, to give you an idea of the different facilities that are on the board. Uh, additionally, you see something called remote server configuration here. This GUI can be launched from a, a remote PC, in which case you would specify the IP address of the recording system and then connect to it remotely. Uh, finally, once the system has been configured, we have the ability to save that information, to save the settings as a profile, and those profiles can be stored. You can store as many as you'd like, and then with a single click, be able to reload uh, any profile. So, you might have four, five, six different settings out in the field. Instead of having to go there and reconfigure every time for it, you simply set up the profiles first back in the lab, go out in the field, and single click, you're ready to go. Uh, so this is the first screen, a very basic screen. Uh, all of our systems obviously have a record screen, a record facility. Depending on the number of channels you have, they'll all appear down here. Uh, we have the ability to automatically name files uh, in the recording. Uh, this uses both the board and channel information as well as the date and the time. If you don't want to automatically name a file, you can simply browse to uh, your data drive and create any kind of file name you want. Uh, I just give it a name and now it'll record to that file name. Uh, you're able to overwrite existing files, specify your transfer length in terms of the amount of time that you want to record for, or perhaps in the number of mega samples, millions of samples that you want to record to. We offer looped recording and finally you see a field here called master record. In the case of a multi-channel recording, if you want synchronous phase coherent recording, you can simply click on the master record uh, button for every channel in the system and use this upper window here to control the recording. Uh, here you'll also see there are certain things available uh, like the transfer time, uh, the, the ability to select a start time. So let's say you want to record in the future, you can simply go in here, set up the date and the time that you want the recording to begin and it will begin recording at that particular moment in time. Uh, again, the looped recording is available. We also report back the amount of disk space that's available to you. If for any reason there was any signal um, discontinuity, uh, a data loss indication would appear here. Uh, you never want to see this happen, but we do flag you if for any reason it does happen. Uh, additionally, um, we give you the ability to optionally record the GPS position information uh, if you do have the option of a GPS uh, receiver in your system. Some people don't want to have that information in their recording. Uh, so we give them the ability to deselect it if they want. Finally, another nice little feature we here, have here is segmented recording. Instead of recording a giant file that, a file that could be uh, multiple terabytes long, we have the ability to, uh, for, to give you the ability to select uh, the segment size. So you can make it so that your files are as little as one gigabyte all the way up to 400 gigabytes uh, wide. Uh, one of the nicest features of the recording, uh, recorder is the signal viewer, and I'm going to show you that right now. Uh, the signal viewer gives you the ability to monitor signals uh, prior to recording them or, or during recording or, or after recording for that matter. Uh, we have some nice controls on here. The FFT size is selectable. Um, we can go in there and, and, and bring the noise floor down by selecting a higher FFT size. There is averaging available. There's a peak hold feature. 
which allows you to uh, you know, look for any kind of signals that might occur momentarily. Um, as I mentioned, the averaging allows you to bring down the noise floor. And because I have an FM modulated signal here, you'll see there's quite a bit of bouncing of the main signal itself uh, as it moves back and forth in frequency. Um, we have the ability to go in and zoom in on that signal in the frequency domain as well using some video zooming tools. Uh, this is in addition to the type of zooming that you would get out of a digital down converter. This is just vi video zooming, uh, but you can see here that signal that uh, it's a 505 megahertz carrier that's FM modulated, so it's moving back and forth. Let's just quickly turn the modulation off and it'll give you a much more steady signal. There's a, you know, a very simple sine wave at 505 megahertz now at this point. Uh, we offer the ability to use cursors so that you can mark signals. So if I set up a cursor and I simply grab it and I drag it over the peak of the signal here, you can then identify the frequency and the amplitude of that signal. And we can set up multiple cursors, both in the frequency and the time domain. Um, if I zoom in on the time domain, uh, first thing I can do is I can set this up as both samples or in time in terms of the x-axis. And if I zoom in on time, I'm able to go in and take a look at the signal. I could actually pause this, I could set cursors, I can measure the amount of time. Um, in addition to the measurement facilities that you see here, uh, we do measure the ampl amplitude and report it to you. Uh, there's an overload LED which will kick off if for any reason you're overloading the signal. Uh, we measure the harmonics, the level of them, um, the second and third harmonics as well as the sine add and the total harmonic distortion. Uh, and in addition to all of this, there's information about uh, what you're, wh how you have the system set up. Uh, in this case, the sample rate of the A to D converter. Uh, if you had a DDC, it would tell you the DDC was enabled, the packing modes, bandwidths, so on and so forth. So the signal viewer is a really nice tool to be able to take a look at a signal that you're acquire, acquiring. Uh, it gives you a good sanity check. Um, and then once the signal has been recorded, we have what we call a file viewer here. And it's very similar in setup. That allows you to go and take a file uh, that you've previously recorded to open it up. Let's get a better file here for you. Um, and you can actually scroll through this file and find points of interest. Uh, you can play it back in real time. Uh, but it's essentially the same facility. It, this is a recording of something that used uh, one of our digital down converters. You can see here we've zoomed in with the digital down converter to pro look at 160 megahertz bandwidth uh, using an 800 megahertz sample rate and a tuning frequency of 500 megahertz. Uh, similarly, we have FFT uh, selectability, we have cursors, we have all kinds of uh, nice features that you see uh, in the signal viewer. Addition to, in addition to that, we have a precise timestamp supplied and if a GPS receiver is included, uh, latitude, longitude, and position, uh, and altitude uh, information will be made available to you. So um, again, all of these tools that you're seeing here, the signal viewer, the file viewer, the main GUI, are part of the system flow recording package. This comes with every talent recording system that we provide. And uh, please check, it, uh, check this out, as well as all of the different model recorders uh, on our website.